This is a deep dive of how you can create your school card checks in Harness IDP based on custom data sources. So what do I mean by that? As you're aware, school cards in Harness IDP is a way for you as a platform engineer to let developers know how their components are doing based on production readiness, on some service maturity checks, uh, DevOps maturity checks, and so on. So one of the examples is, well, do you have good test, test coverage in your code base? Now, <clears throat> we, in the way it works in Harness is um, there are a certain number of data sources that we integrate with just for scorecards. So you, you can see a few, but we don't integrate with the world. So if you have some data source, um, let's say SonarCube is one example, and the thing that you're trying to measure is test code coverage for each and every component that you have in the catalog. The catalog data source itself is a great way to build these custom checks. So one of the things that it allows us is to measure one of the properties in the service definition, in the application definition, um, which we can compare it with a desired number. So now, in order to in order for the check to work, we have to ensure that the data is present in the catalog first. So this has three parts. First, we will create a scorecard check on that catalog um, metadata field. We'll assume that it exists. Of course, it will fail in the beginning, learning from you know test-driven development here. So we'll first build a scorecard check on custom fields, right? The second exercise we'll do is, is, the, is the core of this exercise is that we will ingest that data in the catalog and we will see the, the checks uh, either passing or failing as, as uh, based on the data we have created. <clears throat> and third, we will automate this uh, ingestion using harness pipelines. We will ensure that it runs on a periodic basis. You can configure this, you know, let's say, to run every day, every five minutes. Um, depending on how frequently the data is changing. So let's start with the first. Um, let's create a scorecard with that custom check for our code coverage. So why don't I, why don't we get started? <clears throat> so I'm in my catalog um, and let me, let me just a couple of, um, you know, services and applications first. So here I have a catalog in YAML. I have two components in here. One is a pet store library. The other is a boutique library. It's all coming from one YAML uh, that I'm just going to register in the catalog. So now that I've imported, um, I will be able to see these two components in the catalog. Let me reduce my this this video thing um so i can see the boutique library and the pet store library now as you notice um you know this has a sample scorecard which will just go away as soon as we create a real one but uh let me just show you that this does not have any code coverage number inside the metadata field neither the yaml has it so as you can see, this does not con contain the code coverage. And it's, it's the, it's the uh, core information here that this data is dynamic. So it, this data will come from an API uh, and it will not be present in the YAML because it will update all the time. And then we're talking about code coverage in this case. So our components are in here. Let's create this the scorecard check. So let's come to scorecards. Um, in order to create a scorecard, we first need a check. So let's start there. Uh, so we'll create a check and we'll call this um, code coverage is healthy, right? Um, ensures that you have a code coverage higher than 75, something like that, right? Um, and then the, the data source that I'm going to use is the catalog itself. And here I need the evaluate expression, uh, which is the generic one. And here you can see an example. In my case, this is going to be metadata dot test coverage score. And I want this to be greater than, let's say, 75, right? Um, and that's it. Um, that is my check. The check is not created. And now I will also create a scorecard and I will add that check that I have 
this let's say is a service maturity scorecard and then it's applicable to every software component in my catalog uh, let me just create this and publish this and now if i come back to my pet store library i should see the new scorecard up and running and it should just fail so this is failing it's saying missing data makes sense so uh, the first step is complete we now have a custom scorecard which is checking for uh, code coverage score but our catalog does not have that metadata dot uh, code coverage uh, field so it's not um, it's saying it doesn't have any data so now let's ingest our data that is step two <clears throat> now in this case uh, i'm going to show you an example how to do this in in python it is an api request you can literally use any um, api client you can run this locally using whatnot like postman or you can just write pure curl commands that's also fine i think python is more express expressive um, it allows me to you know talk through the steps and that's what i'm going to do so very first thing um, i've created a harness api key um, don't worry i'll i'll, I'll um, you know kill this token so you don't you, <laughs> you don't have to worry about uh, this being leaked here's how you can do it you can really go to the the harness platform you click on your name and this is where you can create your api key create a token and then you can just uh, add a new token you can set the expiry and then there you can get create a api key so really simple i need a harness api key um, to make the request to the software catalog in harness idp a couple of libraries that i need one is the request library in python um, that um, should be installed these are the default libraries that come with python so ensure that you have python requests installed <clears throat> now um, let's understand um, what is the data that we need to feed right so we will we would want to update the metadata dot test code cov test coverage score uh, in the catalog let's ensure it's the same uh, test coverage score that we're checking in the scorecards so we want to update this we want to do this for boutique library and pet store library and these are the results these this is the value that we want to update now this is the point where you know you would be calling your third party apis uh, you'll be fetching the data from either let's say sonar cube or something else where this data is available and that is true for you know whatever it could be coming from a csv um, or a spreadsheet um, as long as you can cr create a mapping of the entity and the value that we need to update um, just a quick word on this this uh, syntax well that is how we represent um, entity references in the catalog um, so you know this is just the kind of the kind of the entity which is component as you can see uh, in the yaml this is component kind and this is the name so you can just write this as component boutique library and that will apply for apply for our and um, boutique library component so this is the mapping that i have key is the is the entity ref um, for the component and this is the value here's my api key uh, the field that i want to update is metadata.test coverage score and that's pretty much it now the endpoint that we need to update is um, the catalog endpoint as you can find in the documentation and first of all how to get this documentation so you can search harness idp catalog ingestion that should get you to the uh, ingestion api docs really fast and, and you should be able to explore the api docs here so this is my endpoint um, and the headers that I need are, well, the API key account ID. Account ID is right there in the URL. So you can just copy that. And uh, yeah, um, we expect the content to be in JSON. So let's talk about the request body for a bit. Now, the request body is, like, this is the, this is the request that we're going to make. So let's construct that. So the field is metadata dot test code coverage, test coverage code, sorry. Um, this is the field that we want to update dynamically in the catalog, right? So that that is the the central 
um, like the unique identifier. So this API is supposed to ensure that the field is updated for any or all entities that it is applicable to. And we assume that the field is not coming from YAML um, you know, statically. Um, so that is an assumption that this field discover score is going to be updated um, dynamically. We can reduce the scope of this API by adding filters. So we can say this is only applicable to kind component and type service. These are two required filters. However, you can filter down by let's say um, tags, owners, and a bunch of other things uh, that you can that you can that you can use to filter catalog components, uh, lifecycle, and so on. But right now um, we, we know that it's a component and we track it as a service. Now there are two fields. So first one is the value. Now value is the default value that will be applied to all entities except the ones that we want to override with a specific value. So in our case, we know that for boutique, it's 40, for pet store, it's 88. For any other component, the default value is zero. Um, that's something we can feed. Uh, we can assume that the data is not coming, it's not uh, it's stored, um, something is going wrong. So that is the default value. Now the value overrides is essentially a list of refs like entity names and the value for those so this is how we are constructing it for all the uh, items in the mapping well these this mapping that you see here we're constructing a list of these um, objects entity ref mapping this particular thing and then override value mapping the actual value so as you can see, this request body comes up, comes out to be like this. The field that we are trying to update, the filter on the catalog, the default value, and then the specific values to be updated. With that, um, we can make the API call and then it should work. So let's try that. Uh, right now, as you can see, this entity has no value. You know, I can see this in the inspect YAML there is no metadata dot test coverage score or anything like that. So um, let's update it um, and uh, let's let, let's execute all of it. So uh, imported library is created by mapping, assuming it's coming from a <clears throat> third party um, source. My API key, the field that I want to update, this is the endpoint, these are the headers. Let's prepare the request body this body is good. Let's make the request and see what happens. Well, um, it went pretty quickly. And we can see that um, it says we have entities with addition. So there are three entities which got where this field was created, uh, well, where it's like fresh. Now I can run this again. I can run this any number of time and, and you will see that this re response updated now. It's saying that three entities now got updated. So well, you can run this any number of times with new values, 40, 40, 88 here is just an example, but we assume that this API is going to be used um, in a periodic basis to update data. Now, let's, uh, let's see if the data is available or not. So let's hit refresh on this page. And then I'm going to go to the scorecard and I'm going to rerun check as it, it was run nine minutes ago. So now you can see uh, this is passing. Well, let's take a look at the entity definition so I can verify this. So I can see that the metadata.test coverage score is actually 88. Um, so this is great. Let's see if it worked for the other component. Uh, boutique library, it should still be failing because the uh, Real number is 44. Well, actually, actually it's 40. And I expected 75. Cool. So as you can see, um, we, we, we created a scorecard on custom fields for entities, and then we used an API to ingest all of this. Lastly, we will use our, um, let's say, this Python script 
and we will configure a pipeline to run on a periodic basis. All right, so now I'm in a harness project and I'm going to create the ingestion pipeline. Let's call this ingest um, catalog code coverage score. Let's uh, store this pipeline um, in a Git repository. Here I'm going to choose a uh, choose my git repo in harness code of course you can um, store this in line or you can store this in your github right so um, here i can add a developer portal stage that's fine or i can add a custom stage that is also fine so let's let's go with the idp stage and let's call this um in just um code coverage uh score um, I'm choosing to run this on Harness Cloud. Uh, this will consume my, uh, you know, cloud credits. Uh, you can also run this in your own infrastructure. That's also fine. So let's add a step. And here I'm going to add a run step as this is uh, just my custom stuff. Let's call this ingest data into catalog. Right. Um, I'm going to choose the Python shell. Of course, you, if you have, if you want to run a different container, you can specify container registry image that's also fine you can run shell as well that's fine so i'm going to use python and uh, i'm going to convert this notebook into a python script so let's uh, let's do that um let's download this as a python script i have my script um as i can see here and i can just copy the whole thing and I can put um, in my pipeline. So I had some clearing up uh, here, so I can remove that. Um, and that's it. So this is my Python script that I have. Now, one thing that I would like to demonstrate is don't store your API keys like this. You would want to use uh, API um, store. So let's first save this and I'll, I'll demonstrate how to do that. Um, how to use a secret manager uh, to do this. So let's remove this and uh, let's uh, apply changes, right? Now in this project that I have, um, Himanshu Neo, I'm going to go to project settings uh, under here. Um, well, let me first save this pipeline. Let's go to project settings. Let's create a secret. So you would want to create a secret. Um, I am using the harness secret manager. You can also use your own um, secret manager stored in your infrastructure. Let's say Himanshu harness API key. This is my value. Let's ensure, yep, that's, that's it. Um, I've added this secret to my project. Now, I can um, I can see that it's created. Um, I wanted to see if there's a there's a copy reference button. That is fine. So all I need is um, this secret identifier, and that should be fine. Now let's go to our pipeline, and uh, we can do this both um, in this UI mode. Or the YAML mode, uh, whatever, uh, both is fine. But I'm going to replace this with uh, expression, which will say secrets. Uh, let's search it. So harness secrets inside pipeline expression. Um, I create a secret. Uh, I need to do this. So secrets dot get value, and then the ID dot get value, and then my uh, example. So that is that is my expression. Um, yeah, I think I think that's fine. So that that should uh, that should do it. Let's uh, hit save and uh, let's apply changes. Um, and let's first run this pipeline and ensure that this works.
and then we will um, schedule this to run every hour. Let's hit run. <clears throat> Uh, all right. I think I need uh, I need strings um, around my around my API key. So that makes sense. Um, something like this. Well, let me use single ticks. Um, yeah, let's hit save. That changes. Um, run again. Looks like uh, this worked. Um, we got three entries with updates. Um, let's confirm it's here. So I'm going to rerun this check. Yep, looks like it's still failing. And for our pet store library, let's rerun this. And yeah, this looks like it's still passing. So that's good. Let's uh, ensure that this has our uh, number. Uh, the, the the custom field is already there perfect um last step we have a pipeline which is able to ingest data into the catalog it's using our secret manager um now we need to just run this on a loop so go back to the pipeline studio uh, open the pipeline and the way to do this is using a trigger so go to triggers from the top Click on new trigger and at the bottom you will find this cron job trigger like supposed to run this on a periodic basis let's say we call this runs uh, daily you can say it runs hourly as well if you think the the number changes every hour that's fine let's let's continue and you we have a nice ui which you can use to you know use the expression i'm using run every hour and yeah this should be the right syntax for that it will run it every zero minute of, of every hour um and uh, that's pretty much it um i i now have a trigger which is enabled and uh, this will trigger this pipeline every hour it will update my catalog components and then um i now have a successful custom check on a data that is being ingested into the catalog which is not part of the yaml um, that that we have for the catalog so this is how you can use um, scorecards not harness idp to create scorecards on your custom data i hope this is helpful if you have any other questions reach out to us um, and uh, i'll ensure that the um, links to the pipeline and everything is in the video description Thank you.